and welcome to my channel. Today I wanted to talk about what happens when your client stands you up for a photo shoot and things that you can do to protect yourself from something like that happening. So if you haven't uh, watched my video before, I was stood up for a photo session that I drove about an hour each way for. So if you haven't checked that story time out, go ahead, I'll link it in the cards down below. But I want to talk about more specifically like business because that story time I wasn't it's not like now I'm really into weddings I'm more professional I was kind of doing sessions for $20 and I didn't have contracts or anything but now I am way more of a professional I have contracts I have deposits so what would happen if let's say someone books you for their wedding and you schedule an engagement session and they stand you up so I've seen a lot of things on different Facebook groups of how different people deal with these kinds of things so I just wanted to kind of compile all of them together and like let's start a discussion man down below in the comments like let me know how you would respond to these kinds of situations but let's get into the video so I wanted to start this video off with uh, ways to protect yourself um, just in case this does happen to you so the first thing is a contract definitely get your whoever it is to sign a contract and so I'm gonna be talking a lot more about like weddings and engagements and things like that just because that's what I do but if you're a family photographer or if you're a family photographer or a portrait photographer senior photographer something like that uh, I would still have a contract and I did a whole video on what to include in your wedding contract but there are some websites out there that you can buy a contract from I think HoneyBook and Shootproof, you can buy different contracts from them. So definitely invest in a contract. Just an agreement saying like the date and the time and like this is a legit transaction and it holds each party liable. So you're required to be there as well as the client. Another thing that I personally do is I require a deposit to even just book the date. So again, speaking more on weddings, in order to save their wedding date, I require a third deposit of whatever package they want. So I think that looks a little bit different depending on the kind of photography that you want to do. So let's say you're a senior portrait photographer and you charge $300 a session. Maybe that is a third. So you get a $100 deposit and then the rest is due at the actual session or by the actual session however you want to do it maybe some people i've seen do half like half of the entire package or of the session is due so it's really how you decide to do it but i require like you, even though the contract is signed your date is not saved until i receive that deposit which is laid out in the contract as well so it doesn't really become active until I get the money and I say this because number one people will feel more invested if they have invested money so if they just book you and they don't have to pay anything they don't have to sign anything it's not as legit for them so I think it doesn't really keep to the top of their mind you know what I mean they have more to lose because they've already invested something and it also saves you as the photographer because I mean as a wedding photographer you pay that deposit I'm saving your date that is a date that I cannot give to somebody else and if somebody wants that date I have to turn away business and same with portrait photographers too I'm sure if you have like a specific can't talk specific date or time that's not something that you can just give away to somebody else so you're literally turning down business so it's a safeguard for us as well and then in I mean hopefully this doesn't happen to you but in the case that somebody does not show up you still get something for it which sounds it sounds insensitive but at the end of the day this is a business and this is your time and your skill so if you drive to a location and they don't show up this is your livelihood, this is your income. So you deserve something out of it. And so I think it motivates the clients to write down the right date, be proactive about it because they've invested something, but then it also helps you in case something like this does happen, you still will get some sort of payment. We're doing all of that, we have a contract signed, we have the deposit paid. What I like to do is, especially the day of the session, if not like a couple days before, 
just shoot them an email or a text. I always try and get their phone number just in case I need to call them. Like if I'm running late or they're running late, we have our phone numbers. So I will shoot them a text, be like, oh my gosh, I can't wait to see you at 6.30 p.m. at insert location here. You know, just making sure everything's laid out in the text. And the day of the session, I will also text again and say, oh my gosh, can't wait to see you guys tonight. And most of the time, like if it, it's mostly couples and engagements, right? So they're like, oh my gosh, we can't wait. You know, a lot of it's like that. But even if you're like a, doing senior photography or family photography, texting the mom or the senior or whoever, hey, can't wait to see you, blah, blah, blah just to make sure that you are consistently communicating with them because in the case that I got stood up, she wrote down the wrong date. So, and I didn't follow up till the date. So she thought it was supposed to be Sunday, but it was actually Saturday. And I think if I would have been a bit more proactive a couple days before, like, hey, see you Saturday at four o'clock at whatever place, maybe that wouldn't have happened. So I think that kind of communication is very, very important leading up to the event and on the actual day that you're supposed to meet. Like, hey, just confirming you're gonna be there. Like for engagement, it's a little bit easier or maybe you do this on different portrait sessions, but if there's an outfit change on the day of the session, I will text them and be like, hey, just to confirm, you do get one outfit change. Are you planning to do that today just so I can prepare? So you phrase it as something that's like, hey, just so you know, like, are you doing your outfit change? But really, I'm thinking, hey, you're showing up. <laughs> just to make sure you're showing up because outfit change, yeah, I can prepare for that. I assume that you're having an outfit change if it's included. So I think, that, you know, getting creative a little bit with the messages and not just straight up being like, just making sure you're gonna come, but saying, hey, I can't wait to see you tonight. Oh, just to confirm, you do get an outfit change. Are you going to be doing it or whatever? Uh, or do you need outfit ideas? Whatever it is, getting creative and having that communication could help limit the amount of times you could be stood up. So those are just three things that you can do to help your chances of getting stood up be lessened. I don't know, I don't know grammar today and I can't really talk, but whatever. Um, it will help negate the chance that you will possibly get stood up. It can help the situation, make it more legit, make sure you get paid and you're doing everything in your power to confirm and get on people's schedule. But at the end of the day, you still might get stood up for an, a session, a, a portrait session or any kind of photo shoot. Somebody may just not come up. And something that I always try and think is to not take it personally. And this is what I think of with a lot of things with the business. Don't take it as a personal attack because you don't know if something happened. You don't know if there's a family emergency, they were sick, forgot to communicate, anything like that. It may not be that they don't care. <laughs> um, because I think a lot of the times we get in our minds that this is my livelihood, this is my income, which is all valid and true reasons to be upset. But you never know what if something happened in their family and they the last thing on their mind is to contact a photographer you just never know so try and be sensitive up to a certain point and understanding so don't come at them being very defensive so that's what I try and do <laughs> maybe that's not the right thing maybe I'm a doormat but I try to be very understanding and sensitive to people because I never know what they're going through and where they're coming from so that's what I would say first, but obviously in my contract, that deposit is non-refundable. So depending on your personal decision, you can decide to give that money back or not. So in the case of a family emergency and they don't show up, I would probably give them their money back just because that's the kind of person I am. But if they just forgot and didn't care or just stood me up and like never communicated again, I would keep it. But because it's laid out in my contract that it's non-refundable, now I get to make that personal decision and legally I am allowed to keep it, that money, okay? So let's say that you find out the reason why they forgot whatever the reason is and they want to rebook with you. Now you are charged with the decision, do you want to rebook them? <laughs> do you, or do you just like refer them to somebody else? I mean, again, this is really up to you, but I would 
if this were me and somebody stood me up for let's say a portrait session or a family session so let's say I'm supposed to do family portraits for somebody and they stand me up and they're like oh sorry well we want to rebook well I would not rearrange my schedule for them I would put them in the next available date that I have but I wouldn't necessarily redo my entire schedule for them depending on the reason of course so I'm operating under the assumption in this made up scenario <laughs> that they just forgot and are like oh I forgot sorry I want to reschedule so I would definitely not rearrange my entire life to get them in but I probably would rebook them and then you could charge them the price of the entire session instead of just the deposit like okay listen your whole entire session is due up front and then do the things that I mentioned before so contract deposit and communicating up to the actual day I think it's really up to you whether you want to rebook with them and you could charge them the entire session up front just to protect you just in case this does happen again um, but I would send another contract about it I really think it depends all of this advice depends on how your clients are and the reasons why they stood you up so if they are very let's say defensive about it you might not want to book them again because it'll be awkward <laughs> like trust me when that happened to me I was really worried if we ended up not rebooking but I was really worried about how awkward it would be honestly it I thought it would be so awkward um, so maybe you don't want to rebook and say you're full and refer them to somebody else sorry but yeah I think just be understanding of people's situations and then also maybe you charge them the entire session up front instead of just like a third deposit just to cover yourself and make them invest more into this I want to know everybody else's experience I've only really been stood up the one time and it was over a $20 session and that was a huge mistake but I want to know your experience what you do if you get stood up or things that you put in place so you don't get stood up at a session so luckily I've only been stood up the one time since booking weddings I have not well, I don't think I'd be stood up for a wedding, just an engagement session or something. But let me know if this video was helpful to you. If it was, please give it a thumbs up and make sure you subscribe to the channel and I'll see you next time. Bye.